When you look at distant mountains, you begin to wonder what secrets they hide among their forests and atop their peaks. Amid the mountains, nature's everlasting bounty of wonders becomes abundantly clear. Join us as we journey to explore the Great Smoky Mountains. afternoon, we were off to another trip, stopping to pick Thomas up along the way. Oof! I just punched myself in the face. <laughs> we headed south through Kentucky and into Tennessee. On the way, we explore a rest stop with some historical information and Civil War dioramas. As we drove south, we saw more and more hills rising into the clouds in the distance. Finally, we found ourselves in the Great Smoky Mountains once again. Fog and clouds surrounded us on all sides as we drove through the mountains on our way to the Smokemont Campground. Andrew and I pulled into the Smokemont campsite. Only a little bit later, we saw Robbie and Thomas pulling into the area. Uh, just like five minutes ago, yeah. Oh, nice. Hair is long. <laughs> Welcome. What's up? How's it going? <laughs> How's the drive? It was good. It was all right. Yeah. I mean, drives are never that fun. <laughs> Unless you're Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> I, need, uh, I need Robbie drive this time. Really? You didn't drive at all? I didn't drive the car. whole time, man. We quickly got to setting up our tents and grabbing food from our bags. Under a foggy evening sky, we gathered around to eat and talk about our past trips to the Smokies. It's been nine years, for me at least. Man, campsites like those are so nostalgic. <laughs> we just get to sit around and enjoy the, the open air. <laughs> we were also talking about how Thomas was talking about getting like an RV at some point. Thomas would just like drive for seven hours. <laughs> we're, back, we're in the back playing cards. <laughs> Cooking up a steak like on that episode of stuff. It's like we're like feeding it to Thomas while he drives. <laughs> After a relaxing evening, the rain started coming down, so we retreated to the safety of our tents. Wow, it is really starting to rain, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind if it rains all night. Just as long as by the time we get up in the morning, it is dry as a bone. How are you guys doing? Doing good, how about you guys? <laughs> are you dry? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Thomas is pantless. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else want to get pantless? So the rain actually started coming down pretty hard. We're all tired anyway, so I'm ready to sleep pretty soon. Man, it's just so nice to sit in a tent when it's raining and you know you're sheltered from the rain and the sound and everything is like relaxing too. It signifies the closure of a day. Even though it's raining though, but it's, it's just really nice. The sun came out the next morning, shining brightly through the moss-covered treetops. As the sun rose higher, the campsite and the electric RV generators started to buzz with life, and we all got up to get an early start to the big day. How'd you sleep? Uh, decently. I decided to forego my air mat because Why? I was like, oh, it'll save some weight. 
and I may end up regretting this decision. <laughs> I slept as good as I remember it being in a tent. I would always wake up and like have to like roll. It's like, I wouldn't have to do this in a hammock. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. I think that was the best night of sleep I've gotten in a tent. It was the right temperature. It was the right back. It was the right pillow. It was the right tent buddy. <laughs> For breakfast, Thomas had a fancy new coffee setup he wanted to share with us. So we got our old beans. We got our coffee grinder. I was gonna say, that looked like some sort of like steam piston or something. <laughs> Aeropress, and we're gonna make some piping hot, good, good coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I had to catch myself there. <laughs> Making the coffee this way is a laborious but satisfying process, and it has rewarding results. That's some good coffee. Yeah. That is good coffee. Is it sour? Is it bitter? It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it not great? <laughs> a crow scampered around camp looking for food. While we had some downtime, I decided to check around for some interesting plants. So all around this campsite there's beautiful trees. I've, I'm seeing like dogwoods flowering. I've seen tulip poplar and eastern hemlock. But down here, this is actually a type of orchid, wild orchid, called a, uh, a showy orchid. You can see it's got these like really unique, beautiful flowers, kind of this lovely like purplish pink and white color. It's like the height of spring, so I imagine we're going to see a lot more wildflowers on the trail. But it's really cool just seeing that there. After that, we broke camp, packed up our bags, and headed out to our trailhead. On the way there, we saw some amazing views of the distant mountains. Now, we arrived at the Newfound Gap trailhead, but Brian and I still had to drop off one of the cars at the Alum Cave trailhead for the end of the trip. As they headed out, Thomas and I explored around. You know, the funny thing is, this is still lighter <laughs> than the backpack. I attached myself the first time I went backpacking. This is pretty reasonable, I'll, I'll be honest. Thomas is my Sherpa. <laughs> While we waited, a cold fog rolled through the entire area, making us a bit concerned about the weather. Eventually, we saw the others return, and the fog cleared up, revealing a beautiful view of the distant mountains. With the crew reunited, we would soon head out on the trail. But first, Thomas filled us in on some of the history of the area. So we're actually at the top of Newfound Gap, and you can see Tennessee on this side, North Carolina on this side. And the reason Newfound Gap is important is because settlers, as they were coming this way, this was probably the most easily traversable pathway through the Smokies. Oh. So that's why this is significant here. But hey, let me show you one thing here. Oh, wow. Katadin, 1,972 miles. Wait, that's how long the Appalachian Trail is? No, it's more because it starts down in Georgia. Oh, God. <laughs> now, we made our way onto the Appalachian Trail to begin our hike. We would be headed north on the AT, camping at the Icewater Spring Shelter, then heading west into Tennessee staying another night at Mount LeConte before hiking out on the Alum Cave Trail. Did you guys expect it to be this cold? Uh, no. <laughs> but we were just experiencing like, I don't know, 20 mile per hour winds at least. But I think as long as the trail isn't that windy, we should be absolutely fine. So I'm seeing all along the trail growing out of this moss, there's these beautiful blue flowers and these are actually called blue wets. When I first learned them, I thought they were called blue X's because like they have kind of this X shape with the flower. Uh, there's also these trout lilies growing, which have this really mottled pattern that kind of looks like the skin of a trout. And then I've also seen uh, rue anemone and may apples growing. And may apples, you know, later in the season, they'll have these really delicious fruits growing, but it's super hard to find them because usually the deer eat all of them. There were also spring beauties and wild violets growing from the hillside. We continued hiking up the trail, which rewarded us with a glimpse at the distant mountains. We still had a long way up to go and there were more plants to identify along the way. There's some really beautiful fiddleheads coming out, and I don't think it's the edible variety. Usually, so there's an edible version of these ferns that have like kind of a U-shaped cross-section like celery. Typically, they're much thicker and bigger, but it's really beautiful seeing these just popping up for the first time. I feel like the imagery of that is just like so romantic and fantasy-esque. <laughs> 
There was also a flowering trout lily, which unfortunately was closed up due to the cold, wet weather. We hiked past towering trees and large rocky patches of the trail. Along the way, Andrew saw another interesting plant. So if I'm not mistaken, I think this bush growing here is something related to gooseberries. It's kind of got these rounded lobe leaves. I've seen something like this before growing in a friend's garden, and they grow kind of like these interesting little berries that almost look like green grapes, but with like striations. Yeah, so I don't know exactly what species it is, but it is in the currant genus. So, you know, currants like the fruits. <laughs> Unfortunately, no fruits to eat, so I'm just gonna keep going. <laughs> So right now we're kind of contending with every time we get into a windy patch, it feels like the wind chills like in the 30s. And then once we get out of it, it's actually pretty warm. This hike is just super nice because even though it's uphill, all of us took the time to actually like reduce the weight of our packs and, and pack really smartly. And it's definitely paying off, man. Oh yeah. <laughs> feels so good right now. Water dripped from the lichen-covered boulders as we made our way higher up the mountain. The higher we got, the more impressive our views became. The sight of the distant mountains, open sky, and sunshine had our spirits high. But as we wound up the mountain, the weather changed. A misty haze rolled between the trees, obscuring both our views and the sunshine. I will tell you one thing, the Smoky Mountains is the most aptly named park in the world. So every time we come out here, this is what it's like. All this land used to be owned by uh, John Smokey. <laughs> Let's get some better commentary from Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he was owned by Smokey Bear. <laughs> we hiked deeper into the fog, past fallen trees and up narrow bends. Water trickled from the moss-covered rocks as we hiked through this damp, foggy forest. The trail flattened out a bit as we neared a small junction in the trail. Well, I am super glad I brought my winter sleeping bag. I thought it was gonna be warm and toasty. This is not. <laughs> When you're camping up in mountains, it's important to understand what your elevation is going to be because the temperature of the elevation you're going to be camping at might be up to 30, 40, 50 degrees off from the nearby city. Part of the junction led to a little hilltop, but there was too much fog to see anything. What a view. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think this is our route over here. This is the Appalachian, and then this is uh, Heifer Creek or something. Let's eat in this yeah. nice little pine forest. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. It's very welcoming. Oh, this is nice. I love little pine forests like this. It always feels like nice, welcoming little alcove. Yeah. So what do you guys think of the hike so far? It's so much colder than I thought it would be. <laughs> yeah. I was expecting like summertime, sweating. Uh -huh. My hands feel like it's winter. <laughs> it reminds me of uh, that first day at Grayson Highlands. Mm. Mm. So far, the uphillage is not nearly as brutal as our past Smokies experiences. Packing smart really helped a lot. All in all, though, it's, this is great so far. Oh, wow. I am looking forward to some sunshine. <laughs> oh, yeah. That oh, yeah. <laughs> After our snack break, we headed back out, but we got distracted by something we saw just off the trail. I see some uh, weird cage or something out here. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's like a giant trap or something. Property National Park Service. <clears throat> well, I'm not gonna get in there, even if just for a joke. <laughs> I don't want any disastrous results. <laughs> yeah, that would be a bad idea. <laughs> Moss and lichen-covered trees surrounded us as the fog became even thicker. The mist accentuated the mysterious ancient quality of these mountains. Eventually, we came to another split in the trail 
where we stopped to check our progress. So we are headed to the Icewater Spring Shelter, 1.3 miles away. Nice. That's pretty, yeah, I think we'll be good. Take our sweet time. The hike so far had thankfully been fairly easy and enjoyable. As we hiked, the fog only seemed to get thicker. I bet the view would be really superb if it wasn't so smoky and cloudy. Oh yeah, yeah, that would be amazing. We continued on beneath overcast skies, over rocky uphill trails, and thickets of moss-covered hemlock trees. Despite the foggy weather, we all still had a sunny disposition. I think it's like an attitude thing, but I'm just like not getting phased by any of this. We're just having a good time today. Yeah, I feel great. I feel on top of things. I have to say the same. Yeah, I'm gonna forple that. And my pack just feels so much lighter today. <laughs> yeah. I think it's because Thomas is holding the tent. <laughs> my pack doesn't seem lighter, but I'll be honest, I think I've always had a very <laughs> light pack. It's like Thomas is finally carrying his share of the weight. <laughs> I, well, okay, I think you guys have overcarried your share. That's very true too. <laughs> Before long, we were getting much closer to our campsite. Is this a junction or should be getting close? Yeah, there's a sign right there. Oh, okay, oh, wow. we're here. We went to Ice Water Shelter, which is this way, and it says 0.2 miles left. So yeah, this so, is where so we're going tomorrow. We'll go down this way, then come back up. So tomorrow's 5.5 total. We continued on, finding potential campsites all around. Somebody had a fire out here. So because of COVID, you can actually stay in a tent instead of actually being in the shelter. Normally, you're not supposed to set up a tent around. Is that a bathroom? I think it is. I think so, yeah. Hello? Yeah, that's, uh, that's it's definitely a bathroom right there. Oh, there's the bear hangs over there. Yeah. Shelter is right there. Nice. Hi. Hello. This is amazing. I hope we have a really nice view tomorrow morning. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, what do we want to do? Because, I mean, we could scout and see if those places up there were still good. There's some trails that will lead you out to. All right, we scouted down the trail a little bit, and it looks like maybe there's like one patch of dirt where we could camp, but nothing really that great. Yeah, I think we're going to head up closer to the shelter and see what we can find. In the end, we decided to stay yeah, at the first campsite we had seen. It's nice and pine needly. Yeah. Secluded. Soft ground. Be great. Pretty open. Yeah. All right. I get some stuff set up. Yep. Yeah. We started setting up our tents on the flatter, more open patches of ground. We had put our tent down so that any roots sticking out of the ground wouldn't dig into our backs at night. We wanted a good night's sleep for tomorrow's hike. Okay, I think me and Thomas are pretty much set. Let's go check on the other guys, see how their setup is going. How are you guys doing? There was a bit of rain that got in, but I think we're good. <laughs> yeah, it's looking pretty cozy over here. Yep. We got a nice little cozy setup over there, boy. <laughs> <laughs> all in all, I say this is a pretty good campsite, man. Yeah, I feel yeah. very cozy and <laughs> secure. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit windy. It's gonna be windy tonight, but I think once we get in the tent, it's gonna warm up. Yeah, mm -hmm. it won't be anything we haven't done, dealt with before. And I'm sure we'll all be comfortable. Yeah, it is kind of surprising. I don't know. I mean, we, we definitely got an early start. We were able to wake up pretty early. Mm -hmm. If you had to choose between being able to use the shelter or staying here, what would you choose? I, I'd much prefer staying in a tent than the shelter. If, if it were just me uh, or maybe one other person, I'd do the shelter, try and make some friends. Yeah. Yeah, for oh. the social mm -hmm. aspect, it'd be fun to do mm -hmm. the shelter. But with yeah. the whole but pandemic. I'm not here to make friends. <laughs> <laughs> the whole pandemic thing, I'm I'm okay with it right now. <laughs> I've already got too too many friends right here. <laughs> <laughs> Do we think we want a fire tonight? Yeah. This doesn't look like a state sanctioned fire. Right <laughs> <laughs> I would also be surprised if you found wood dry enough to make a fire. Yeah. <laughs> I think if anything, it'd be smarter to just get another early night and get an early start tomorrow. Mm. Robbie keeps eyeing us, <laughs> and then I see his eyes darting to me, and then Andrew's food, and then my food. <laughs> I know, dude, don't you lie. <laughs> what, is, what is this? Oh, I thought this, these were, 
<laughs> cinnamon stick. This is, where, there's cinnamon sticks this is where I'm storing my utensils. In. We enjoyed sitting around camp, but it definitely was a bit chilly. Man, that is so warm. <laughs> yeah, it's a might bit chillier than I expected. Yeah, it's the wind, man. That wind chill. Yeah. And honestly, like when the wind dies down, you literally just feel like complete relief. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We gotta remember Mohican. Remember the Mohican. Remember the Mohican. <laughs> this is balmy and warm. <laughs> oh, I'm not complaining at all. This yeah, is yeah. this is totally manageable. I'm just saying it'll be nice tomorrow. <laughs> you look like a volcano that's erupting a human. <laughs> After goofing around, we hung up our gear on one of the pulleys specially designed for the many black bears that roam this area as many as two per square mile. After hanging up our gear, we took a quick gander at the shelter. Then, we hit the trail for a little day hike. With plenty of time to kill, we decided to hike to Charles Bunyan, a rocky outcropping with a nice view further along the Appalachian Trail. On our way to Charlie's Bunyan, the trail took us down rocky trails and past trickling mountain streams. But with the thick fog, who knew if we would even have a view once we got there? Okay, I think everybody should prepare themselves for this being extremely disappointing. We might be hiking for absolutely no reason, so I think just look at this as a nice warm-up for tomorrow to keep your legs in shape. The trail continued through the woods before opening up, and we could see patches of sunlight on distant hills. Yo, that sunshine looks so appealing. Yeah. Oh, God. Hopefully it'll travel over here. I mean, the wind's blowing this way, so hopefully it should. Now, we hiked along ridgetop trails wow. with a clearer view of mountains all around us. The only thing that mars this great beauty is the cold. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's part of me that thinks there's just going to be a patch of warm sunlight at the end. It's probably a false hope, but... <laughs> the sky cleared more and more as we hiked, bringing more sunshine. Up above, there was a vicious wind. But this little berm and these shrubs are like a perfect windbreak right now. My hands actually can feel things again. <laughs> the powerful gale pushed the clouds all across the Blue Ridge Mountains. Down here, though, the air was clear and the sun was shining. Well, this is definitely worth the hike. Yeah. If you look up there, that's where exactly where we're camping up there. And so all the clouds are getting pushed up to the top. Even though we're, it's sunny down here, when we're up there, it's going to be perpetually cloudy throughout the night. Mm. But every cloud is going to get pushed up to right where we're <laughs> sleeping. <laughs> Like, in our face. We took in the view a little bit longer before hiking on to see Charlie's Bunyan. right here but it's not gonna kill me just yet if I were to take a jump yeah I'd be a goner but this is that's scary right there I'll crawl like a lizard just <laughs> stay completely prone <laughs> oh man a, wind, a little windy yeah wow holy cow yeah look at that drop Whoa. off can't look down okay I gotta <laughs> I gotta sit <laughs> here were mesmerizing, and the rocks seemed to emanate an ancient, 
mystical energy. Clouds quickly floated by overhead, adding to the mysterious feel of this rocky overlook. This is cool. This feels like some sort of ancient ancestral land or something. It's like a meditation point where yeah. people would come to do a pilgrimage and then they'd meditate atop the rock. <laughs> so I'd be surprised if I saw like some you know ancient artwork sculpted on the side of this this mountain here. Yeah, it's like a sacrificial altar back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good climax for today's hike. Indeed. Now it's time for falling action. What did they call Danu that? Danu. Danu. Yeah, the Danu Ma. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna book Danu Ma right in my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> now, we headed back to camp, retracing our steps along the magical trail, which was now engulfed in warm sunlight. We took one last look at the distant view before hiking back into the mossy wooded hills. Hike was it was strenuous because it's uphill, but it was not actually that bad. We're already more or less back. And then Thomas was talking about food the whole time, so I've got a good hunger built up now. <laughs> well, there's Thomas. I thought that was our tent. That's definitely not our tent. Oh yeah, I probably could have told you that. <laughs> that camera can capture that view. That's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, are we on a documentary? Well, yeah, we're building a YouTube video. What's up, guys? It's MTV Cribs. <laughs> Back at the shelter, the through hikers were much more lively in the evening's newfound sunlight. As for us, it was time to prepare a dinner of dehydrated meals. Sichuan chicken. That sounds too good. chicken. And as we ate, we ran across someone who had seen our videos. Go ahead. Hey, I'm out here with uh, Adventure Archives on the AT, and we're hiking and hanging out with all these people, and I'm really happy to be here. Thanks, guys. Nice. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's wondering about what y'all are doing over here. Oh, yeah. And I was like, you know, I'm just We're, we're the police. <laughs> we're here to arrest people. This is Szechuan chicken with rice from Marie Fisher. It's not like a ton of vegetables in here, which is really satisfying. This is delicious. Thank you. See, this has a wild boar in it, apparently. Like somebody speared a boar in a forest <laughs> and put it in this. They dehydrated it and put it in. <laughs> All right, I've got the real termat beef stew. This is from Ida. And where's this from again? Norway. Norway. I'm super excited. I, I, when I tasted the spoon, it tasted really good. So looking forward to this. Mm. It tasted really good on that. This real termat from Norway. I like That's it a lot. Cool. Look at that. I got that sad boy macaroni and cheese. Oh. <laughs> Don't let the packaging fool you, it's mac and cheese. <laughs> I really hope this tastes better than it looks because it looks really bad. <laughs> Seven out of 10. <laughs> so this, I feel like this is gonna be like a Thanksgiving dinner, but with wild boar. There's apples in it too. Yeah. Mm. Oh man. What does boar taste like? Just like pig? At least yeah, it's kind of like aren't really gonna pulled pork or something. Is because that, yeah, that's that good. good. Like, oh, thank you. After eating, we sat around and took in the calm scenery all around us. As peaceful as the scenery was, the whole area was abuzz with the activity of other hikers. 
So apparently it's actually the season for the AT right now and it is packed. Tents all over. It feels like we're in some sort of like tent city. It's kind of kind of cool. The, the, yeah. I wish Crazy. having more people somehow meant there was warmer weather. <laughs> like our collective body heat. Just. Yeah. Alas, despite the extra people and the bit of sunlight we retreated to, the evening became quite chilly yet again. Thomas is using his socks as gloves. It is much colder than we anticipated. <laughs> Dude, I'm astonished how many people are hiking the AT. I did not know it was this many people. That is incredible. Does it make you want to hike it more or less? Or... Much less. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I could be totally off base here, but when I was doing the PCT, uh -huh. I felt like, yeah, there were a lot of hikers here, but they would scatter themselves much more because you could camp anywhere. It was so much easier oh, to camp anywhere. Yeah, yeah. So you're gotta... just tired, just camp where you are. Well, what's interesting is they basically travel in groups. And that yeah. makes sense when you actually think about it. If everybody starts at the same time, you're gonna be doing similar distances to mm -hmm. the same shelter. Yeah. So you start to recognize people. It's like, oh, it's you. Yeah. You pass me today, I'll pass you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be worried about like falling behind the group that I had gotten to know. Like eventually, just slowly and slowly, like, <laughs> yeah. see them less and less. Well, I, I remember one time, Robbie, you were saying, it's really cool to meet people that you know you'll never see again. Knowing that you're gonna see them again, that changes the dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I better be on my best behavior. <laughs> He's like, you just make a bad it. impression, I'll just think you're <laughs> dead for the rest of your life. <laughs> right, I thought you were gonna change it together, like, I'm never gonna see them again, I don't care what they think about. Yeah. It's a little early, but I think I am ready to get, I'm going in. <laughs> <laughs> I already changed my long sleeve shirt stuff, so I'm doing yeah. okay. Yeah. But... I'll see you two in the morning. All right. All right. <laughs> We retreated to our tents for an early warm night. How you doing, Thomas? I'm doing all right. Finding my uh, feet are pretty stinky right now, so I apologize. Okay, yeah, keep them in the, keep them on that end of the tent. <laughs> I'll keep my head as far this way as I can. Oh, already feeling better, man. <laughs> <laughs> my body parts are still cold. <laughs> it's just the uh, the knowledge that I'll get warmer. <laughs> Security. Of the... Security of the tent and the. Yeah, but actually the, the shelter from the wind is a big, big plus. I am regretting not having my air mat a little bit, but <laughs> it'll be okay though. <laughs> I'm not regretting having my air mat at all. All right, we have peaked in, <laughs> in camping luxury right now. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs> at night, a super moon shined outside our tents. The full moon was at its closest in its orbit around Earth, giving it a slightly larger appearance in the sky. Next morning, the golden sun cast light onto distant, misty mountains. The overlapping layers of the distant hills looked almost like an old watercolor painting. As the sun rose higher, it thawed the cold frost that had bitten the campsite. Eventually, we all woke up and talked about our nights. How do you guys sleep? <laughs> Like, I was like cold, like really cold for like the first three hours. I don't know if I was like dehydrated or if I didn't eat enough or something, but like kept waking up and like it was kind of uncomfortable through the night. Probably should have brought my air mat. <laughs> <laughs> I had a dream I got shot in the shoulder and I kept trying to take an Uber to the <laughs> hospital. <laughs> and I woke up and my shoulder really hurt because I was sleeping and I was like, oh. <laughs> we all went to the shelter to take in the warm sunlight and the beautiful morning views before breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> While we soaked in the morning sunlight, I noticed a wild edible plant nearby. So I was sitting here enjoying the sun and I saw this cluster of random leaves. I realized that these are ramps. <laughs> if you give it a whiff, you can kind of smell the onion smell. 
but you can also tell the ramps because the bottom of the stems are kind of reddish. A lot of people harvest these by like pulling out the bulbs because they want to use like the whole bulb like a, a thing of garlic. But it's actually a lot more sustainable to just take the leaves and cut those up and use them like chives or leeks because that way they'll grow back and you're not removing the whole plant. We boiled up some water for the morning's coffee and prepared a bit of oatmeal. In the grass nearby, a dark-eyed junco foraged around for food. Then we packed up our tents, grabbed our bags, and headed out. Uh, so about 0.1 miles ahead, we can turn right, go up to Mount Kephart, and then come back down and continue on our trail. Robbie mentioning Mount Kephart had reminded me of some national park history that I shared while we hiked. In the national park documentary that I love, there's a significant character, Horace Kephart or Lawrence Kephart or something. Kephart be, uh, was really good friends with a Japanese man named, uh, first name Masa. They both had mountains named after them. So this is Mount Kephart, and then on the other side is Masa Nob. There's also a style of bushcraft knife called the Kephart, oh. based on Horace's preferred knife. It's kind of a standard looking knife, but it's kind of like well-rounded. And This jump off, this is Mount Kephart up here. This one? We hiked up the trail leading to Mount Kephart, which was incredibly steep and tiring to hike. But it wasn't long Ooh. before we reached the top, where we had a snack break. It's funny how like, when you compare yourself to others, like to through hikers, you start questioning like, oh man, am I a real hiker? But it's like, no, we've been doing this for like over 10 years and like, it's just funny how like, There's we're no so reason. trained to think that way. I also think that anyone who wants to go outside and walk mm. and consider themselves a hiker, totally consider yourself a hiker. Mm -hmm. When we first got started, I mean, people were saying, you guys aren't hiking, you know, you're, you're wearing jeans, sneakers, all that stuff. The enjoyment of being outside has changed no more since you guys have gotten more professional. Sure, you can do more miles. Yeah, you're a little bit more prepared, but you're just as much of a hiker back then as you are now, or as much of a hiker as those folks are yeah. who are going a thousand plus miles. Yeah, so for you out there, don't be afraid to hike. <laughs> yeah. And don't compare yourself to other hikers. Yeah. Except for season one Adventure Archives. You can probably compare yourself to that. <laughs> we sat around enjoying the view while Andrew pulled out some of his new snacks. Me and Brian both have a bunch of mini beef sticks. Why Somebody's so already, many though? Because we're hiking like five miles today, so I was like, I better pack enough. <laughs> <laughs> Each tenth of a mile means one beef stick. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good beef stick. <laughs> I must say, that is a good beef stick. You pack a fine beef stick. <laughs> now it was back down to the main trail and on with the main leg of our journey. Today, the sun was shining brightly, illuminating all the moss and greenery of the trail. Somehow, it seemed like the beautiful weather was accentuating the beautiful scenery around us. saw a little outcropping that looked like a good spot to rest. Oh yeah, let's take a break. I think we're at the lowest point of the trail right now, and then the next part of the trail should be pretty steady hiking. A little bit of uphill, but more or less flat. After that, for about two miles, I think we're gonna go to probably the steepest uphill of the trail. So that'll be a bit of a challenge, but that'll be towards the end of the hike when we can get close to the campsite. Now, we continued on our way. The ground is so soft. Yeah. 
just okay. take a nap right here. Hope our campsite's like that so I can <laughs> sleep easy without my air mat. <laughs> the trail took us along a ridge top, which treated us to some nice views. Yeah, so far, this section of the trail hasn't been too bad. There've been a few uphills, but it's mostly just flat and along the ridge. It's quite, quite nice, especially with this beautiful weather. The hike had been relatively easy so far, but every so often we checked to make sure we were still making good time. It is a little after 12 and we've probably done about a mile. We want to get to the lodge before five because there's a restaurant that you can get takeout from, but they close at five. And you'd think that getting there by five would be no problem, but for us, that might actually be somewhat up in the air still. Oh, I think we can totally do it. So we met a hiker at the shelter right before we left who said, there's a section along this trail called the limousine and they call it that because it's supposed to be nice and flat and easy going. I think this must be it. So along this hillside, I'm noticing a lot of flowers called spring beauties. It's funny because yesterday, all the flowers were all closed up because it was cloudy and cold, but up here where it's sunny, they've all opened up. And these have a really beautiful like five petal flower with some pink striations and it's also edible. So, you know, if you were in a survival situation, you could probably eat like a lot of the stuff growing here. We continued on, and the trail now began to increase dramatically in steepness. Yesterday definitely gave me a false sense of security. This is much more in line with the Smokies that I remember. Not only the steepness, but also it's like every corner you turn, you're like, okay, we must be at the top now, right? <laughs> nope, <laughs> more uphill. <of them. laughs> I don't exactly know what causes this, but it's interesting. There's all these rocks embedded in these roots, and it's not just like shoved into the crease. It, it looks like the tree's actually grown around it. And I was at a park recently called Flint Ridge, which was a major place where like paleo Indians would harvest flint for arrowheads and stuff. And you see a lot of trees that are just growing around these chunks of flint. So there must be something similar here where there's just like a ton of rock in the ground and the roots just engulf and swallow some of them. We all continued hiking along the mountain ridges but one of us was definitely outpacing the rest. I feel like when Thomas disappears, that's when you know it's a real Adventure Archives trip. If we haven't been into the trip long enough for him to disappear, we haven't fully hiked yet. <laughs> so I think we're coming up on Anakista Knob. I think there's still a little more sort of flattish trail, and then a little bit after that it gets steeper, but dang, look at this view. I remember when I first experienced trails like this, just seeing all the moss on the ground and like having these amazing views, I really felt like I was in the Garden of Eden the first time I came here. The weather is perfect. You enjoying this weather, Brian? <laughs> Who wouldn't be enjoying this weather, man? <laughs> we continued following the trail back into a wooded section before finding our long lost fourth crew member. We were saying that the way you hike is like after you complete a mission in a video game, and the guy's like, I'll meet you back at camp and you see him ride off, but they just teleport him to the camp. <laughs> We're just hiking for miles and we don't see you anywhere. <laughs> I'm not trying to do it because I want to be ahead of you guys. It's just, I get in a, I get in a flow and I can't stop. That's good. Otherwise it just becomes more painful. I, I can very much stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this hike is actually very reminiscent of like our first trip to the Smokies. Mm. In what way? Well, the weather partly, but also the uphill, but just, like last time we were in the Smokies, it was mostly cloudy the whole time. But this has the same feeling that I remember. Welcome, Brian. Welcome <laughs> to Mordok. We all took a moment to enjoy the quietness of the That's bend in the here, trail. Yeah. These are the best moments. Mm. When you get to rest and it's nice out. It's kind of hard to continue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're at a good save point. It looks like there's a bit of downhill at first, but... <clears throat> it's a bit of downhill. It should, be, it should be a little easy for the next half a mile. That's good. Yeah. 
That's what I like to hear. You think there's going to be bathrooms up on top of the lodge? Oh, definitely, yeah. Good. <laughs> Take That's a why Thomas is hiking so fast. <laughs> <laughs> That's always why Thomas hikes fast. Me and Thomas are going to like be in the bathroom and have the phone like at the top of the stall so we can both watch them. <laughs> 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 or like hold it underneath the stall. <laughs> it's going to be a 30 minute poop break. <laughs> Get us through at least an episode and a half of <laughs> King of the Hill. <laughs> now, we continue down the trail, climbing up strenuous inclines, reaching higher and higher. I think this is the beginning of the end of the hike to Mount Macant. This is where it starts getting a little steeper, a little more uphilly. I was just thinking earlier, why is it like when your body, it's slight uphill, it's just nose. And then when it hits a level part, it knows and it's just like, oh yeah. <laughs> it's so immediate, it's the first yeah. step. <laughs> no matter how slight the uphill, it's just like you can feel that slight exhaustion. Although this is more than slight. <laughs> Continued climbing up the hills, stopping occasionally to take in the views and rest. Oh yeah! I think Thomas is gone now. <laughs> we probably won't see him until we get to the shelter. <laughs> he's gonna set the tent up and everything. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna take a nap, and then he's gonna hike out. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I'm rested enough. <laughs> As we climbed higher, the views of distant hills became more and more clear. We trudged on and on, feeling the heat of the afternoon sun bearing down on us. This shade gives some much needed reprieve from the sun. It feels nice and cool. I kind of want to just like stick my tongue under this moss and drink that water. <laughs> we climbed up a steep rocky hill and at the top we saw a surprising change in scenery. This is like a completely different biome set. I'm like, wow. Oh, look at this. There's some uh, metal rope to hang on to. Oh. Oh, jeez. Up here, the views were even more spectacular, filling us with a sense of peace in spite of the treacherous trail. interesting as soon as we entered the super rocky area we started seeing all these different plants and there's this really unique looking one kind of has these like purplish green spiky leaves but it's called a uh, cliff saxifrage it prefers to grow on rocky terrain like this we crossed the precarious rocky part of the trail and we're soon enough back on more normal terrain We had hiked for a while, getting closer to the campsite, but we still had a little ways to go. It's a pretty steep drop off here. Still no sign of Thomas. I'm sure he's up ahead, but... Oh, this is a tough final stretch. Ugh. From here, we could see the spring growth filling the distant valleys with bright green colors. We still had more uphill to climb, but soon we started hearing voices off in the distance. I'm not quite there yet, but I can hear people up there. I'm almost to the Myrtle Point intersection. I'm gonna wait there for Brian and Andrew. 
doth mine eyes deceiveth me. Yeah, I should have waited a little bit back there. <laughs> I thought you guys weren't that far behind. <laughs> Woo! You've probably been here for a good hour, right? 45 minutes. Wow. <laughs> we were thinking you'd probably already be at the shelter. Well, depends if you wanted to do Myrtle Point. I say if we do Myrtle Point, we'll just do it when we're fresh. Yeah. We'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, oh, nice. Nice. Fry had been sitting for far too long. <laughs> I've watched a ton of people just come by and then go back. <laughs> so we just ran into someone who said it levels out after this corner. And I think I hear Robbie and Thomas or someone else. Robbie ended up uh, gung-hoing it ahead, but me and Brian were taking our time. But I think we are close to it at least leveling out. All right. Yo, yo. Thomas is here. Woo. Oh, what a <laughs> sweet, sweet feeling. <laughs> we should probably go to the lodge. Okay. Yeah, we'll skip Myrtle Point for now. We can go tomorrow morning. Yeah, I am hungry. I'm ready for this lodge food. <laughs> Even if it's like a hard boiled egg and an apple. <laughs> <laughs> Together again, we hiked up one last little uphill before reaching the peak of the mountain. Woo! Welcome to High Hrothgar, <laughs> King of the Dragonborn, Buzroda. <laughs> It says high top on the map. I don't know if that actually means this is the highest point. This has to be. There's no I way so, so yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm looking everywhere and everywhere is down. <laughs> Finally, at the top, we could look forward to a downhill stroll to our shelter. I don't think we need to go to Myrtle. <laughs> I mean, I see it right there, but like there. I mean, this is everything you need. This is bananas. That's where we started too, you can see. There's where your car is parked. Crazy, dude. So we went all the way up to there, and then came around down that side. Now we're all the way up here. Holy wow. cow. Dude. Talk about saving the best for last. Yeah, imagine going up this way and saying, okay, now we have to go all the way over there. <laughs> <laughs> As we took in the view, we ran into another hiker who had seen our videos. It's a video. Oh, oh it's, it's a video. video. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> that works. Awesome. Thank you, guys. What's, yeah. your name? What's your name? My name is John. Yeah, um, the, the hike is great. Um, Myrtle Point was definitely worth it. Um, amazing view. Better than this view? <laughs> Much better. Much oh, better. Wow. we might have to go. Yeah. <laughs> right, we were thinking maybe we could skip right, it. <laughs> awesome. Thank oh, you. Right. Thank you so much, John. All right, take care. Oh, have a good time. Time. And now we hike to the Mount LeConte shelter. Oh, baby. We've got it all to ourselves. Wow. Woo. Is this a sight for sore eyes or what? <laughs> wow, this one's super nice. Super, super nice. nice. Not bad. Oh. Oh man. Good times. <laughs> I think I'm doing top buck today. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm not getting on this bottom one. Oh, it's kind of hot up here though. Mm. Mm. I'd have to wait for it to. Well, that might be good at night though. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. A white-tailed deer passed through our camp. As for us, we headed down to the LeConte Lodge for some food. Oh. Public restrooms, potable water, life of luxury. This is exciting. Wow, these are cool cabins, man. As we explored, we wondered if we should have made reservations to stay here instead of the shelter. Can you imagine just sitting out on those rocking chairs? In the evening, we kind of missed out, man. We kind of missed out. <laughs> it's like we got to the shelter and it was amazing, and then we get here and it's like, oh. While we explored, we saw a cute little squirrel that unfortunately had gotten its hands on someone's trash. Now we entered the gift shop to buy some takeout lunch. Inside were also photos of people who had stayed here decades in the past. We enjoyed the cabin's porch and the lodge's view before digging into the food. <laughs> All right, so let's see what's in here. Oh, wow. There's a lot of Gatorade packets. Yeah, it's actually really helpful. Some fruit leather, some beef sticks, <laughs> some cream cheese and bagel, some Oreos. Huh? This cookie looks really good. I knew Rob was going to go for that first. I don't know if it's the fact that it's cut in a square, but it's really appealing to me. <laughs> Nothing like a square cookie, man. Yeah, yeah. Tom is getting super creative. Look at this. I'm uh, going to try and... Is that mayonnaise or cream cheese? Cream cheese. Oh. That's kind of gross looking, actually. <laughs> Any good? Pretty good. 
This is dope, dude. This is like a Final Fantasy village. Yeah. Well, it would be awesome to stay here, but I am still pretty happy with the shelter, though. Same. I know we've kind of said it ad nauseum, but it's experiences like this that really hit home that you don't need a lot to be incredibly happy. <laughs> Happiness is like a experience incremental to what you're currently feeling. <laughs> this is like ecstatic level happiness for me, and it didn't require that much. <laughs> I got that orange drink. <laughs> the food was good, but it wasn't the hot meal we had been hoping for, although it seemed good enough for some of the birds around here. Wanting a hot meal? Robbie and I returned to the shelter to prepare some of our dehydrated meals. We got our water boiling and enjoyed the solitude of the shelter. As we waited for our meals to cook, we reflected on the trip so far. Yeah, dude, just yesterday we were literally using these as warmth. <laughs> <laughs> now it's like 20 layers can't take off. It was so perfect today. Dink. Dink. And I'm also going to be making this. This is from Ida. Ida, thank you so much. Very much looking forward to the uh, beef stew here. Got to see if there's a desiccant packet in here, though. Eventually, Andrew and I returned to the shelter as well. Hello. <laughs> now, it was time to dig in. First, I would be having some chicken and dumplings. Needed a little bit more water. Very mm. crunchy still. So this is some sort of egg sausage skillet thing. <laughs> Eight out of ten. <laughs> oh, pretty high. This this has to be this has to be done right now. Oh, it looks good. Mmm. Get this filth out of my face. <laughs> yeah, we were saying it was great to meet uh, like a bunch of hikers yesterday, but it's super nice to have this shelter all by ourselves now. And there's not a lot you could ask for to improve the conditions right now. So. It was almost like culture shock yesterday. There were so many people. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that was even possible to have that many people out. Um, don't get me wrong. We met some really cool people, but like... These three bozos is enough. <laughs> <laughs> Afternoon drifted off into evening as we enjoyed the warm sun and milled about camp with plenty of luxurious time to waste. The sun started setting, and Brian and Thomas continued resting. Andrew and I decided to hike to the nearby overlook to see if we could get a better view. So there's an overlook up ahead called Cliff Top. The view is supposed to be very nice, and the sun's about to set, so we're gonna go check it out. It's kind of incredible how quickly it got cold. It was really, really nice, and then just like that. Hopefully it doesn't drop too much tonight. <laughs> I don't want to suffer sleeping on this hard wooden board <laughs> and cold on top of it. As we approached the overlook, we got a sense for what it might have in store for us. This could be another Hanson's Point situation. <laughs> I really hope you enjoy your rest, Thomas and Brian, because I think you're about to miss out. <laughs> the sun's golden light, the hills looked especially magical. Before long, we found ourselves at the edge of the cliff tops. From the tops of the hills, we took in a view that, to us, was at once familiar and entirely unique. We had seen hilly vistas like this many times, and we had watched sunsets countless times before. Yet every time, we are struck by how beautiful it is. Every time, it is unique and fresh, filling us with a childlike wonder.
were happy we hadn't stayed at camp, that we went out and ventured to watch the sunset. But we were excited to get back to the others, to eat dinner, and to get into our warm sleeping bags. How excited are you to eat that spaghetti right now? <laughs> I am a 9 out of 10, which is also probably how much of the heat has left it. <laughs> we got back to the shelter and shared our experience with the others. It was incredible. Great. We texted you guys, but honestly, even if you had came, you probably would have been like, it's too cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you look super warm. Look how bunched up this is. <laughs> you look like a green caterpillar. We just, what we just need is one big uh, uh, quilt to put over all four of us. <laughs> no oh, at it. I feel oh, warm. Still warm? Yeah. Still warm? Ooh, yeah. Okay, it's not still warm, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it tastes good. <laughs> oh, man, that is good. So I remember my mom making it. <laughs> it has this nice sweetness to it, which I kind of like. Oh, man. That's the stuff. Right eat more there. spaghetti. <laughs> After our late dinner, we got into our sleeping bags to retire for the night. Yo, it is cozy in here, but it is very cramped at the head. You don't want to look up, <laughs> bash your head. Think about that, but that's how the bears will eat your face. <laughs> this way, the bears will only eat your toes. You coming in, Andrew? I'm coming in. <laughs> I hope this is comfortable. Watch your head. Yeah. Brian warned me, and I still hit myself twice. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, a little bit cramped. <laughs> it's like reverse uh, body snatchers. Like, instead of people coming out pods, it's like people going into pods. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like a bunch of caterpillars. <laughs> All right, well, good night. Good night. <laughs> good. Robbie and I awoke at dawn and decided to brave the cold to catch a mountain sunrise. There's no way I was falling asleep anyway. <laughs> falling back asleep. Oh, oh my God! My. We backtracked along the trail we had hiked in on, making our way to Myrtle Point. As we neared it, the sun was just cresting, casting everything in a brilliant red-orange hue. The window of opportunity we had to see that yeah. was literally within like three or four minutes. And somehow we just made it at exactly the right time. I think about how like there's moments in life where it takes a lot of pushing to get yourself to do something, but yeah. when you do it, you know, you, you come away with like such a good memory. And yeah. if you don't do it, you kind of end up regretting it. Yeah. Like what's the right attitude about those things, you know? Like, because you don't want to constantly be living in regret or having fear yeah. of missing out. Yeah. But you also don't want to like not see all these amazing things. <laughs> I think ultimately when you really boil it down, like once you've had enough times where you've missed out or enough times where you've been like, I'm okay, you kind of find that balance. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Because today I was like, I don't want to get up right now. But if I get up at least within an hour of the sunset, we should definitely go. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking that same thing as people, I heard of people walking by, I was like, oh, I wish I had the willpower they did. <laughs> Well, luckily we made it. <laughs> I also find it amazing how nature never stops delivering. You can see this every day of your life and I don't think it would ever get old. I think that's what's so appealing about views like this. When you see these layers, 
it gives you that sense of mystery again that you used to have all the time as a child. Mm, You're like, what yeah. is beyond these hills? Like, yeah. what is in that land over there? Yeah. Perhaps the key, at least in nature, is to know that each sunrise, moonset, or mountain vista will be a unique, wondrous experience. Maybe the key is to strive to experience as many new wonders as we can, but to know that if we miss an opportunity, nature will provide a new opportunity down the road. To paraphrase Thoreau, sunrises and sunsets are not solitary phenomena, never to happen again, but things that happen forever and ever, an infinite number of times and that makes them more glorious still. One thing I know for sure though, if you're kind of on the fence about doing something, always tend towards the side of experiencing something. The other factor I think is if you don't succeed, don't then be so full of regret that you're like paralyzed for the next time, mm, you know? Yeah. Maybe regret fuels new experiences. Eventually, we return to our shelter. All right, we're back. It looks like there's two bears sleeping in our shelter. <laughs> in the larval form, the caterpillar hibernates until it can grow its wings. But if you gently nudge at its shell, it might come out early. You guys missed an amazing sunset and an amazing sunrise. Uh, you missed a great hour's worth of sleep. We all made the right decision. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since I've been like actually up this early. The early morning always has such a nostalgic smell. It's such a nice appeal to it. Yeah. As the day got started, we grabbed our food bags from the bear hangs and started preparing breakfast. Thomas and I woke up to join the others, who had started boiling a pot of water. We milled around the early morning, waiting for the sun to rise and warm us up. In the meantime, I did some mountaintop kung fu to get the blood flowing. We chatted and joked around with some of our camping neighbors before packing up and heading out. As we hiked out, Andrew and I decided we had to show the others the view they had missed last night. Okay, so we're gonna go up to cliff tops. Thomas was a little bit reluctant, but I forced him. <laughs> and he's gonna like it, whether he likes it or not. <laughs> As we neared the top, we saw more songbirds. have been seeing these birds everywhere, but they've got a really distinct dark top and white bottom, and those are called dark-eyed juncos. If you look carefully at the eyes, they've got a little bit of a darker patch there. And then, we reached the cliff top overlook. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. We took in the view of the hills in the late morning sunlight before hiking our way back down. The trail took us back to the lodge, and Robbie sent Thomas to see if the lodge still had any cookies. Unfortunately, they were out, so we continued hiking. As we hiked away from the lodge, we eventually came to a junction that said we had five miles left back to the car. Luckily, the trail was almost all downhill. It would be smooth sailing from here on out. Is this the downhill? I think so. See you guys on the other side. Yeah, we'll see you at Allen Cave. <laughs> The trail led us along mysterious looking rocky cliffs on one side and beautiful mountain vistas on the other. As we made our way down, we were thankful to have an easy coast for the last day of our trip. Amid dripping rocky cliffs were precarious rocky paths flanked by incredible views. So 
So the route that we did this weekend, if we had done it clockwise, we would have done this all uphill on the very first day. I'm seeing people trudge up this mountain. Oh, it looks brutal. It feels so nice for us, we're just like. like enjoy the view while you're walking because you'll just like get vertigo but our way down, we kept passing many different people who were all braving the long climb up to Mount Lacan. Really impressive seeing some of the older people hike up this mountain. It's crazy. They got some secret formula for life. <laughs> this was even more impressive after seeing just how far down we had hiked from the tops of the hills. I don't know if you can see, but up there there's a dead clump of trees right on the ridge, and that's the part that we went through right before we went to the overlook we were just at. We've made a ridiculous amount of progress. It's all the way down to right here. <laughs> Ready? Yeah, that's good. That's good. Best way to tell how close you are to the bottom is how well you can define a car down there. And I could actually make out some windows, so I think we've maybe got like an hour left. You know, one beautiful thing about springtime is like you kind of get all these different colors. Like this tree right here has all these red buds. But that's a red maple. Sometimes in the distance you can see all of these colors like popping in the hillsides during the spring. As we hiked, we heard voices in the distance. We were now approaching another major landmark, the Alum Cave Bluffs. This is uh, a trail that keeps on giving. Like, we've had so many amazing views and lookout points, and like, now there's this massive cave out of nowhere. It's so this, cool. This is a massive improvement over my last trip to the Smokies. <laughs> <laughs> last trip to the Smokies, it was just, couldn't see anything, just fog and rain, and just exhausted the whole time. I feel like we've uh, done it justice. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we were separated last night. Yeah. So we yeah. were doing it all alone, <laughs> suffering by ourselves. <laughs> this time we were like, celebrating together. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Glad you made the trip, Thomas. Very much. It was bringing so much joy to me. Nine years ago, we had visited this park all together. For Robbie and I, it was our first serious backpacking trip, and it left an impression on us that we would never, ever forget. For Brian and I, it was an amazing trip to visit all the major landmarks that make this park famous. We each had different and unique experiences. And we each saw things that the others never got to. But none of us regretted the experiences we had because we knew the future would bring many more opportunities for us to explore these mountains together. It's so important to seek out moments in life that bring unprecedented wonder that give us new experiences and new perspectives, that rejuvenate our souls and restore our faith in the universe. But if you miss your chance to have an amazing moment in life, don't let yourself fill up with regret. Like a sunset, this world is full of incredible wonders that occur every day, an infinite number of times. Instead of feeling regret, fill yourself with inspiration to go out and experience nature's wonders at the next chance you get. We live on an unfathomably beautiful planet, full of amazing scenery, vibrant people, and incredible experiences. It's important to take in these incredible moments, but even more important is to recognize that the universe continues to deliver them day after day. 
and you don't have to go to the top of a mountain to realize this. Step outside during the sunset. Breathe the fresh air in deep. Eat a warm meal when you're hungry, or drink deeply when you're parched. The truth is, the more time you spend on the tops of mountains, the more you realize that every moment of existence can be a moment of unparalleled and exquisite wonder. That flower was called squirrel corn. There's another one with very similar leaves called Dutchman's Bridges. Uh, but squirrel corn, as you just saw, looks very similar to an ornamental flower a lot of people grow called Bleeding Heart, which is similar in shape, but it's just like a reddish pinkish color. This here feels like quintessential Smokies. Yeah. Every time we leave the trail, it always feels and looks exactly like this yeah. here. <laughs> Hiking right next to the stream, really green leaves, sunny day. <laughs> Good stuff. So the greenery in all this area is mostly the rhododendrons, but there's also this plant, which is called mountain dog hobble, which also describes how I feel right now. <laughs> I'm dog hobbling along. <laughs> What's the first thing you're gonna order? I don't know. I'm really feeling something with mushrooms, like creamy mushrooms right now. I don't know why. Like a steak and mushroom. But if we can find some place that has frog legs, like we did back in 2012, we got to do frog legs again. Okay, we've entered the very final leg. There's only about 10 minutes of walking left. Me and Thomas have totally left Brian and Andrew, except Brian has the keys. I just remembered that. So we will have to go find them. <laughs> Thomas, this is your chance to shine. Set the pace as fast as you want. I will keep up. You will keep up? Let's do it. I will attempt to keep up. <laughs> Have you noticed that everybody's gone? I know. Like there's nobody coming in or out of the trail right now. I wonder if everyone just kind of flooded in at the same time. Well, maybe. Or maybe the parking lot's full. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's possible. <laughs> Two nights. I was gonna say three nights of camping, but no, really just two nights of camping. Man, this is what Adventure Archives is. This is what the four of us <laughs> live to do. This is a great trip. Yeah. Woo wee! Slap it. Well, that map like makes it look so easy. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, just go up there. Come on, man. Look at that. You Ooh, go behind the mountain clear, there, yeah. and then you go up there. So there's Mount Lakanda, and then we were over there, the, and then all the way off. And then, we made it. Yeah. Cars cool. are just up ahead. Great. We just gotta wait for Brian with Key. <laughs> yeah, if you wanna like shout someone out or. You have a shout oh, out? Man. Let's do a shout out to Troy Keener. Troy Keener, yeah. My other hiking buddy. Yep. <laughs> um, who's even slower than Brian, but um, the most methodical person I've ever met. Uh, and then a shout out to all the Adventure Archives guys. You guys are the best and the most entertaining YouTube channel that's ever been invented or created. <laughs> you guys are from Columbus, so that's awesome. Yep. And uh, go tribe. Go Bucks. Go box. Awesome. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> changing into today. <laughs> Should I get the uh, spicy broiled catfish or the southern fried chicken livers? Catfish. Catfish? Yep. I could have known you would say that. <laughs> I'm going to get the, uh, the homemade meatloaf. Right, let's do it. I don't know what... Well, it's amazing how they heat immediately. You're like... Oh, I'm ready to die. I'm ready to. I'm not looking forward to summer. <laughs> I was gonna say, hush puppies are like when someone didn't have anything else to make 
fried food bit. <laughs> so they're like, I'm just gonna fry some dough. Mm. This is like maple butter. Yeah. yeah. My country fried steak is delicious. So. Mm. Should have gotten the chicken livers. <laughs> What'd you say this was? It's uh, maple butter. Mm. Mm. Not bad. <laughs> what? No, no. I was getting a B-roll of your food and it was in oh. yeah. I That meatloaf was very weird. Fried dough is uh, mm, good no matter how you do it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, boy. Oh, I haven't even tried my Jamocha shake. You try your Jamocha shake yet? Not yet. Ooh. I don't think this is nothing. Oh, okay. Take this new hush puppy and eat it. I just realized I totally skipped the green beans. I was like, I don't want this. Are there like southern restaurants in Ohio? Yeah. Can't think of any. Oh. Bob Evans. <laughs> well, I mean like <laughs> southern, southern. Like. Blue, Blue Danube used to be. I want a door and a foot. What was that? <laughs> Yo, this is a lot of food. Holy crap. Yeah. I wasn't <laughs> expecting much. But Thomas said, was it? <laughs> What's it though? You just look tiny, man. <laughs> I know. I was a little disappointed. Yeah, that was. You have, oh, you can have more of these mashed potatoes because I I spooned it with a. Um, oh, no, 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 no. You, you, I don't want. That. You, you eat as much as you can. This was a fun time. Let's do this again, <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen. All right. Have a good one. See ya. Have a good one, Brian. See ya. Alrighty, Thomas. Let's blast that AC. Thomas, it's been real. Robbie, thank you so much for everything. Appreciate it. I'll yep, see you no on the other side. All righty. Yo, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Um, nah, not bad. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about this idea I have for a shout out. It's going to be Curb Your Enthusiasm themed. It's going to have like, so there's a shout out to Gen Mobile or Gen Mobile. I don't, is it mobile or mobile? It's, it's co-founded by a fellow Asian American brother team, also from Ohio. And then he also says, happy Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, everyone, which you know, sorry that it doesn't apply to you, but curb your enthusiasm. Shout out. Uh, so if we're gonna if we're gonna do a if we're gonna do a shout out, do we need to use the curb your enthusiasm music? Because I yeah, really you know, don't want us. It's iconic. I really don't want. Yeah, I really don't want us to get hit with a copyright strike though, because that is gonna send up all the flags on YouTube immediately. I mean, you can't have a curb shout out without the theme. That, the, the, that's the whole point of it. It's like the well, meme. I, you know, I the meme. Have some generic song. Like you could do like a you know a generic piano riff that's like no no, no. It's, it's gotta be it. dun 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 it's gotta be no come on you're always worried about no, these you, things you, you gotta do it I mean it, like we spent so much time and effort on this I don't want to be taken down for a stupid shout out look I, I'll send the shout out to you we can figure it out but for now I've got to go to Brian's I, we need to like exchange camping gear it, man he's gonna want to be in the shout out too and he cannot improv so I'm really hoping to get out of that you know anyway now that you mention uh, uh, curb your enthusiasm there's something I want to talk to you about uh -huh. um i'm i've been looking at my hbo max account lately and it's been nothing but curb your enthusiasm you got anything to say about that these accounts are meant to be shared thomas so you look, look i use look, your I hbo i like, use i use brian's netflix you know we, we we got this when game of thrones was still on so that we could all it was really kind of just supposed to be like a social game of thrones thing but if you're really just going to take my hbo account you know take, what know take there's no that. take this is share you, you, your mom's on there, your dad's on there, your whole family's on there. Why can't my, uh, we're basically family, Thomas, you and I. You know, you know, I, I, I don't want to talk about it. You know, not only am I going to use your HBO account, I'm, I'm going to cancel my Netflix account and use your Netflix account and your Hulu account. These things are meant to be shared, Thomas. All right, all right, all right, all right. You can keep using my HBO Max account. Just stay off Disney. I'm going to use it, but I've got to go now. So I'll see you later. What? Bye. No. Hey, uh, hey, do you have that tent? Yeah, um, got it right here. Okay. Hey, so I heard uh, you were doing a what, Curb Your Enthusiasm shout out? Shout yeah, out? yeah, yeah, it's gonna be really funny. It's gonna yeah? be really funny. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have like Gavin Ryan, let's see, Aquia Giasari, Maryson Cabbage, Jay Raimundo, Sun Jen's gonna be on there. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think, um, I think you got part for me in there? Maybe I could like incorporate my shout outs. Uh, 
I mean, yeah, I just, I don't really have time to come up here and film. It's so much easier on the phone. It's like, you know, I don't have Oh, yeah, you know, I totally understand. Yeah. Here you go. But I mean, you know, you, you are here right now. I mean, we could just, yeah. you just film it right now. Yeah, well, I mean, I I don't have the camera. I don't, SD cards, batteries. Well, I mean, I got that camera in my room, you know, like, uh, you could quality. Just, you could just use that. Quality's not the same. Quality's not the same. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Are you really too busy to film, though? Yeah, I've got, like, Meetings and calls and uh, other obligations. Oh, obligations, yeah, you can't forget about those obligations. Hey, I was just wondering if you actually, uh, if you got around to filming that, uh, shout-out yet. No, I haven't, I haven't filmed the shout-outs yet. Oh, okay, not yet, I see. It must be those, yeah. um, Meetings. Ob obligations. Obligations. Right, 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 Meetings. obligations. Calls. You know, lots of stuff going on. If you hadn't filmed it yet, we could still, you know, I could still help you with it. I mean, I do have a shout-out from... Richard Frangiamore, he said that he wanted to shout out Jennifer for like all the good hiking trips and he wanted to, you know, look forward to seeing her at Bear, Bear Lake, so. How would that fit into the shout out? It's a Curb Your Enthusiasm shout out. It's a shout out, Andrew. I mean, you, it's gonna fit in somewhere. We... I'll, I'll, I'll think about it, but I, I, I'm i getting a really important call, another meeting, I, I need to hang up, so I'll talk to you later, okay? Yeah. Yeah, hi, could I get a two chicken fingers, uh, one double cheeseburger and fries? Hello? Hey, Robbie. Um, I wanted to tell you about this shout out idea I have. It's gonna be Curb Your Enthusiasm themed. I've got names like, like Arlo TJ Augustine, John Scott, Elaine R. Anthony. Uh, John and Lisa Truitt, of course. Um, but anyway, I, I want you to like play the character of Leon Black in the show, cause like in the show, he's he's always eating, and you know you're always eating, cause like if you don't, you get hangry and. Eating. Wait, 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 what? what? You know, you you get hangry when you don't eat, and then like it, it ruins the whole group dynamic. Wait, 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 wait. wait. What do you what, what what do you mean I get hangry? You know, you get hangry, like you get impatient with people when. Whenever we're on a camp- wait, 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 what are you talking about? Where's this coming from? Where's this coming from? Everyone knows you- Thomas knows you get hangry. Brian knows you get hangry. Since when do I get hangry? I am the most calm one in the group. You're calm if you've had six burgers. Come on, Robbie, you know you get hangry. You're probably hangry right now. Okay, well you can do the shout out. You can do whatever you want, but just make sure it doesn't get a copyright strike. All right, fine. Go, go eat a burger. <sighs> hey, Thomas. Yeah, I'm just calling to let you know I'm uh, watching the episode now. Yeah, it's done uploading. I'm, I'm about to navigate to it now, and... Yeah, 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 no, it looks great. It looks great in 4K. Listen, uh, let me give you a call back, okay? Yeah, bye. Down is the best cover band in Minneapolis? Inconceivable! Evil McPhee, you keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. I guess this is the place. Uh, Expedition Research LLC, okay. Ann McBride told me to come here. Said I would be able to find Sanwar 1, but I'm not sure. I mean, that guy looks kind of like Jason Bourgeois. And that guy kind of looks like Charlie Joe. Yeah, and? Um, said I'm looking for Sanwar One, right? Yeah, d does he, does he like to dance or something?
待てよダンボークンズこのサルバドル・ゴザールスには夢がある何言ってんだお前謎解けるんですねお願いしますよサルバドルお前一体何をさあサルバドルあそこにエイラン・ジョーズがいるぞやばいサルバドルがやばいジャスパコプロータこいつ連戦よりクレイジーな野郎だな証明するためになダグラス・ジャクソンの爪のケイトにシャウトアウトだな